We're tired of being pawns. You know what plantation they've never shown us, Abby? The most prominent ones, the ones that were most profitable, the breeding plantations. Why don't you want to show us those? You know why? Because after the research that I did for this album, you realize that the moment that a, a girl menstruated, she was put in a stable where a horse would be and forcibly made it, forcibly made by a male of the slave master's choice. And when she had children, they weren't called children, they were called a litter of pups. The punishment of being or killing a person in medieval Spain is gelding. Gelding is when you take hot pincers and you take a man's balls and dick off root and stem. Killing a person, law of the Bible, right? Medieval Spain, super religious. You killed a man, he should be killed. Why were indigenous and black people categorized as subhuman? So under the law, you would not be punished for the things that you did to us. That's why you used to be proud Right? Used to be proud, white America, of murder. Used to be proud of colonization. Used to, wow, that made us tough. And then you got ashamed of it. And that's what you're dealing with. That's what America's dealing with, a schizophrenic crisis. There's a British manual, right, that was taken out of the British Museum because within the manual, it talked about how it was a weapon of war that should be used against the indigenous population. You're ashamed of that now. You're ashamed, right? Who was Christopher Columbus? His image has been so whitewashed, but he was trafficking little girls on an island. Who does that sound like, huh? All you <laughs> right-wing defenders of Christopher Columbus and his legacy? He was trafficking nine-year-old indigenous girls on an island. Who does that remind you of, you intellectual coward? Just because liberals are dog shit doesn't mean that you shake hands with the devil. Right? The same way I tell people all the time who are white working class people who hear about reparations for black people and automatically get upset. You know, they hear the word Africa and they're furious already. <laughs> but the, the problem is this. The money doesn't come from you. No. It comes from the financial institutions that banked and built their, their stock exchange on labor. On the, 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 the payback that they got from slavery. Because reparations is not actually what African people are asking for in this country. African American people are asking for the other half of reparations. You see, America already paid reparations at the end of, uh, at the, end of the Civil War to slave owners. They gave them money per black yep. person that they let free. And they refuse to honor the people that were actually victimized. So until you do that, you will always be cursed, America. And you can call me a communist, a socialist, but you know what? It doesn't matter what you call me. You know that I'm right, right? And you know that I stand more for indigenous rights than I do for the European interpretation of a left-wing ideology that doesn't always fix, that doesn't always work in a cookie cutter scenario when you plug it into Latin America. Because at the end of the day, that was still being pushed by two large governmental entities that wanted to challenge the United States control of the region. We're tired of being pawns. You know Shalom. Kohalimna Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rekonkadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Thy warfare is accomplished, O Zion. So the Lord says that the Israel or the Israelites became his enemy. So we became the enemy of the Lord for rebelling against his laws, statutes, and commandments. You know what plantation? So by becoming his enemy, and we became subject to the nations by which we had joined ourselves unto and serving their gods, the, the gods of the other nations, idols. So we suffered 
the punishments of the other nations, the heathen, captivity, servitude, bondage, which is the lot that is prescribed to the heathen nations. When we read Leviticus chapter 25, it talks about how the heathen nations were created to be joined as servants underneath the Israelites. <clears throat> so let's go here first. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. <clears throat> the greatness of God. Book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So our ancestors were subject to servitude. The Bible says we are yet this day in our captivity. So the Lord waged war on our forefathers for being rebellious, stiff-necked, being wicked. Israelites were sacrificing babies unto false gods like Moloch or Moloch and worshiping the fertility goddess Asherah. So we were committing wickedness that's even shameful to talk about even unto this day. So all, all of the punishments that we serve was well deserved. The Most High is an equitable power of righteousness and judgment and justice. But now we can have, or we feel a general sense that that warfare is coming to an end against the Israelites. And the scales of justice are being tipped on behalf or in favor of the Lord's people. Let's read this again. So these are comforting words, knowing that there is a general sense that things are getting ready to change for the better. Or we can look up for our redemption is drawing near. Isaiah 40, verse 2. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our power. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. So the Lord's people are getting ready to be exalted again, as in the old days underneath the Davidic dynasty, underneath King Solomon. So the nations are getting ready to bear the brunt and the burden of having committed offenses against the Heavenly Father. So the universe is getting ready to get balanced out and put back on course where the Lord's inheritance is placed back as the centerpiece of the world that are going to rule in the kingdom to come. So this new government is comprised of those that have received the chastening of the Lord, his punishments, his stripes of correction. Let's go here to the book of Lamentation, chapter 4, verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee, Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee into captivity. 
He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So we're going to witness the greatest scene of trading places known to man. So the rich that are sitting in high place are going to be brought low. The international bankers, the global elite, the Israelites that were smitten by the Lord, brought down into servitude, captivity, and bondage, are going to be raised up and exalted. These are the low valleys. The valley of the kings being lifted back up. Up and coming kings and priests of the Lord. But the, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. So meeting the requirements to receive mercy and redemption and salvation is being met in these last days. And the biggest requirement is the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, shedding his blood. Let's read this again. <clears throat> Lamentation 4, verse 22. Let's go back up to 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee, Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. So the cup of the Lord is a mixture of wrath, punishments, slavery. So the Israelites drank from that cup. But now it's transitioning over to those that have oppressed and afflicted his chosen people. And most people can feel something in their spirit that there is a paradigm shift underway. Verse 22, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So that means being carried away into captivity is switching over to those that led us into captivity which leads us to Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill with the sword must be killed with the sword. Let's go to Isaiah 41, verse 10. I'm going to go to verse 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 9. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee and have not cast thee away. So the chief men start with the nobles of the house of David. Let's go into this phrase, chief men. Chief men comes from the Hebrew Strong's H678 Adseel Adseel See, noble chief men or nobles So in the last days the Most High is raising up kingship of the noble vine of the house of David Isaiah 41 verse 12 Let's go back to 11 <laughs> Isaiah 41, we got to go to verse 9 again. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. So we are not forsaken. We are not permanently cast away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, that shed his blood for our sins, is going to be, he's going to show himself in these last days. So he's going to fulfill prophecy through his second return, his second coming. Isaiah 41, verse 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. 
they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. So these are a part of drinking from the cup of the Lord's judgments. So these other nations are going to be relegated to servitude. So they're going to be subject underneath the rod of iron under the house of the Lord's tabernacle, the house of David. Isaiah 41 verse 12, Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. So the Lord is raising up his leaders. His kingship are being reinstated. So the kings of Israel and Judah are going to take their rightful place as the new, the new world leaders. <clears throat> Let's go here to Job 8 and 22. The book of Job chapter 8 verse 22. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. So those that hate the Lord's people are going to be put underneath the foot of his people. So they're going to be clothed with shame under the cloak of servitude and hardcore bondage. So the Lord is going to balance out the universe. Right now, his chosen people had to serve. So he's getting ready to tilt the scales come the judgment and the third world war. So we're entering into these turbulent times to come that have been prophesied from the days of old by the men of the prophets. Job 8 and 22. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. So the habitations of the wicked, the international global elite, is going to rain nuclear fire on their habitations. That's how it's going to come to naught. Armageddon or Hadmagadwan, mountain of troops, or the last and third world war. <clears throat> Let's close out here. I'm going to close out with this one. Let's go to Job 40. Verse 10, the book of Job, chapter 40, let's go to verse 9. Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. So right now the daughter of Babylon has been decked out with the finest things in life has been put as the lady of the kingdoms or, or the majesty of the world. Exuberance, living deliciously, luxuriously. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath and behold, everyone that is proud and abase him. So the daughter of Zion is going to be decked with beauty. It's going to become the kingdom of excellency forever. But the daughter of Babylon is going to be brought down to ashes, to rubble, and have decked herself with precious stones and pearls and have lived lavishly in wickedness, child pedophilia, resource, or raping other nations' resources, invading sovereign territories, and going after gold, oil, and drugs. So all of the wicked deeds are going to be recompensed in the last days. <clears throat> Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud, and abase him. So the first are going to be last, and the last are going to be first. Look on everyone that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. 
hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. So the daughter of Babylon is going to be beat down to powder and sit down in the dust, which means confusion. Let's get one more. Isaiah chapter 47. And we'll close out there talking about the judgments of the daughter of Babylon, which is America. See, remember we read about being brought down to the dust. Isaiah 47 and 1, come down and sit in the dust. O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind mill, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. So she's being exposed in her treachery, in her unrighteous dealings, in her unjust laws, unrighteous decrees, invading sovereign nations for their resources. So everything is going to be panned out or balanced in the last days of judgment. The Lord is going to level the playing field or level all bets on the table where he equalizes everything out in righteousness. Verse 3, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. So our Lord and Savior is coming back with all power, signs, and glory, traveling with the hosts of heaven, or the so-called UFO fleet. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So our ancestors did not receive any mercy. Even the two-year-olds had a damn a bag or satchel around their shoulder picking cotton in the cotton field. Or 60, 70, and 70-year-old 70 women. That's no mercy. Even our old men were in the field in the hot sun with minimum water. Let's read that again and close out. I was wroth with my people I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So that yoke of that burden was hardcore slavery. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. These were the yokes of slavery. And now it's a spiritual bondage. Our minds are being enslaved or ensnared and in, and captured by false doctrines and plantation Christianity. But nevertheless, the Lord is going to balance the scales of justice. We don't have to do anything on our own might or strength other than preach the word. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Rekhakadash Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwame Yashorala. And the Bible, Shalom.